Okay, good morning, everyone. How are you all doing Monday morning? Good? Okay, so excited about the new week ahead? I don't feel any excitement in your answers. Okay, good, good, good. So that's really nice. So let's just uh, uh, submit this week ahead, this day into God's hands and uh, let's pray that uh, God will give us his wisdom as we uh, sit through the classes. We'll pray together. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, for adding another day into our lives. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your strength. Father God, we pray that as we, uh, Lord, move ahead with this week, that, um, uh, Lord, we will draw closer to you. Lord, your word says, draw near, draw closer to me and I will draw uh, nearer to you. And so, Father God, we thank you that as we take this step, Lord, to meditate on your word, that uh, you are drawing close to us. Uh, Father, we ask, Lord, that you will touch and, uh, uh, Lord, encounter each one of us in a special way. We commit the classes uh, regarding prayer and intercession into your hands, O oh God. Father, we ask for your blessing upon every student uh, on campus, online, e-learn, and uh, their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's proceed with um, our study on prayer and intercession. Thus far, we've learned about what prayer is, what is the right foundation for prayer. We've seen that Jesus, being the Son of God, He operated with prayer in His life. So prayer is God's design and Jesus honored and respected prayer. We saw in the last class that there can be many different kinds of prayers that you and I engage in. Today, we will speak specifically about one kind of prayer, and that is the prayer of asking and receiving. In the prayer of asking and receiving, it's important for us to know that faith plays a key role. Faith plays a key role in all kinds of prayer. But especially, we must understand the role of faith in the prayer of asking and believing. So today, chapter 5 is about how to pray a believing prayer. When we want to receive from the Lord, how to believe and how to ask in faith. That's the question that we are going to address. So here in our notes, there are a couple of pointers that tell us about how to approach God and uh, how exactly to pray in a correct way. So it's been listed in steps. We will look at seven different steps. The first one is to come to God with a clear conscience. So whenever we ask God for something, our conscience has to be pure or our conscience has to be clear and confident that whatever we are asking is right in the sight of the Lord. So that is what we need to know as the first step, a clear conscience where there is nothing within us which may be, um, which, you know, which may be disturbing us or hindering us. There are passages of scripture. I'll call it out. Some of us may have to turn to it and read it. Today, what I'll do is I'll request our online students to help us entirely. There is a slight challenge with the mics. So if the on-campus people speak, the online students will not be able to hear. And therefore, if the online students can read out, that would be really nice. So could someone kindly turn to Psalm 66 and verse 18, please? Eighteen. If you uh, eighteen, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Yes. If I regard yes. iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Yeah, very good. So uh, it very clearly says that if I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So that is referring to sin. 
in our conscience okay so if there is an attitude um and we've discussed this during orientation all the fleshly attitudes where we come to the lord with pride or um, some sense of jealousy bitterness and we make a prayer or a sense of competition and we say god you have to bless me can we pray such prayers in the ministry it's possible we may say god bless my ministry increase my ministry make my church grow big so that it is bigger than the person who has a church down the road is that a right attitude no i want the ministry to thrive because of competition that's not the right conscience so our heart and our conscience is very important before the lord maintain pure conscience when paul writes to timothy he's mentoring timothy as a pastor he writes to him you know what holding on to faith with good conscience it's so valuable faith and good conscience it's a it's a wonderful combination even when we come to god in prayer we must come to him with a clear conscience and here the psalmist says if i have iniquity if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear that means that if i am aware that there is something in my heart which is not right before the lord i must immediately take action get rid of it don't regard it or keep it or you know sort of ignore it and say it's fine no problem i'll just move on and god will answer my prayer that shouldn't be the case first thing first and foremost there should be nothing in our hearts which we feel ashamed about okay when we come in the presence of god so anything that the holy spirit may be convicting us about we get rid of those things so no sin no disobedience um you know no self will we come to him with a pure conscience there are two more passages uh thank you juliana for reading uh, could someone else now read 1 john chapter 3 verses 21 to 22 another person it'll be good to hear all your voices today you generally hear the voices of the on campus students but today we'll have your voices So someone please read 1 John 3:21 to 22 and another person 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 7 and 12 Beloved if our heart condemns us not then we have yes. confidence toward God and yes. whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandment and do those things that are pleasing in his sight Yes yes so thank you uh, shanti for for reading it out for us so this passage says that if our heart does not condemn us if our heart does not condemn us we have confidence before the lord so it's possible that our heart condemns us when does that happen when does our heart condemn us if we have yeah when we're doing something wrong there's a guilty conscience we call it where our heart is condemning us god has given us a uh, a moral compass and that is our conscience if we do anything wrong morally wrong a healthy conscience will immediately prick us it will say why did you say that why did you do that why did you go there it's not correct that's the compass it's directing us and saying that it's against the very person of god it's against um righteousness it's against morality and so we must heed the voice of the conscience if our heart does not condemn us then we have confidence before the lord what if our heart condemns us we come to god in prayer and our heart is condemning us we did something we didn't deal with it and we are feeling the guilt like oh i shouldn't have done that what to do Rip, ask repent. forgiveness 
yes keep on praying ask for forgiveness repent uh, seek repentance till our heart is clear at one point we'll feel that okay you know i dealt with it so up until that point we need to seek the lord and uh, have a clear conscience so whenever we come to the lord in prayer we must make sure that we are not carrying that guilty conscience we always say keep short accounts with god what are short accounts yes so whatever has happened deal with it every day deal with it things do go wrong every day so we come before the lord and say god okay this happened it should not have happened i should not have done this i'm sorry move on you know as you experience god's forgiveness so when we have that right attitude it becomes easier to receive from god in prayer so we will have confidence before god to ask anything if our conscience is clear so have the conscience clear let's read the next passage 1 peter 3 7 and 12 likewise husbands live with your wives in an understanding way showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that mm. your prayers may not be hindered yes so um here again you know there is there is a an invitation to husband so this is a this is in the context of marriage where the scripture says that if uh you know a husband does not want his prayers to be hindered he must treat the wife with understanding treat the wife well okay that's when the, his conscience will be clear before the lord and his prayers will be heard if that's not the case then the husband's prayers will be hindered the bible says so in the context of marriage husband and wife um for the prayers to be heard again one needs to maintain a clear conscience by doing the right thing so this is what god's word invites us to do in all our situations and circumstances so the first thing when it comes to prayer believing prayer is to have a clear conscience second thing ask the father in jesus name why should we do that why should we ask the father in the name of jesus okay jesus instructed us that's why that is point number 1 what else do we understand about the name of jesus why to ask in jesus name because he is the way okay any any other reason any other reason ask in the name of jesus hmm yeah okay great so what uh, we're all trying to say is that we approach the father through jesus he sees us through christ isn't it and uh, that is why he hears our prayers okay uh yeah that's also correct so we are going through jesus that's why we are using the name of jesus all right now he also accepts us as we are we are going through jesus but then now we are in christ and we are uh, made holy we are sanctified we are accepted we are the beloved so in christ the father accepts us as we are but all that was possible because of jesus okay so we go through christ that's another reason any other reason why we are using the name of jesus god should be glorified that's why he has made a way to go through jesus okay sure thank you uh, shanti she says god will be glorified when we go through jesus uh, uh, what about you ajay mm okay 
Hmm. Yeah, because of our sin, our prayers will not be heard. This is this is um, this is correct, but we are also in the new covenant, isn't it? Right, right. So in the new covenant, through Jesus, we can approach God. Otherwise, there is that distance because of sin, as God spoke in the old covenant. Okay, very good reasons. Uh, the additional insight which I wanted to share was the authority of the name of Jesus. So whenever we say in the name of Jesus, it means this is coming with the authority of the name of Jesus. Do you understand? So that is also another reason why Jesus asked us to pray in Jesus' name. So the name of Jesus, one of us said, is the highest, the greatest name um, in all of the universe. So when we are making a prayer in the greatest name, it's carrying that authority and uh, it gets the Father's approval. So these are all some of the reasons why we must pray in the name of Jesus. There are two clear passages where Jesus himself instructed us. He said, I'm going away. I'm going to the Father. You've not asked me anything. From now, you ask. And you ask in my name. Ask the Father in my name. And I will do it for you. So based on that promise, we ask in the Father's name. Could uh, somebody online please read John 14 verses 13 and 14. And one more person can please read John 16 verses 23 and 24. Whatever you ask in my name that mm -hmm. I will do, yes. the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you yeah. ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes, praise God. So there is a clear instruction. You know, you ask the Father in my name and... I will do it for you. So let's also go ahead and read John 16, verse 23 and 24. Who would like to read next? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Mm -hmm. My father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Okay. I'm um, sorry, John, to interrupt you. Is it uh, John 16, 23, 24? Sorry, I read uh, John 14. No problem. You you can yeah. read these verses. In that day, you will never you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Hmm. Until now, you have not asked any, uh, for anything in my name and ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Okay. So uh, twice. So John 14, again John 16, Jesus is saying the same thing. Ask in my name. So when we pray, how do we generally pray? How do we hear people praying? Yeah, Lord, thank you. And then they ask things. Who do they pray to? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. What is correct? Jesus' name. Okay, so people pray to maybe God the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, but usually people pray and end the prayer in the name of Jesus. So that's how they do it. What is the instruction we see in the Bible? When we look at the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. So who are we addressing? The Father. This is a common practice. We are not saying that you can't pray to the Holy Spirit or you can't pray to Jesus. We can because all are equally God. So there is no, nothing is wrong if we pray to Jesus or if we pray to the Holy Spirit. However, 
this is the way in which jesus taught us our father so usually usually this is how we pray we pray to the father we say heavenly father abba father father god pray to the father and we pray in the name of jesus so that's the that's what we have scripture for okay commonly pray to the father in the name of jesus so that's how we also make a believing prayer all right so that's the pattern that we are going to follow we we've, we've seen the instruction which jesus said he said you ask the father in my name and whatever you ask i will do it for you does whatever mean whatever it should be aligned to the will of god and the word of god okay we must not uh, interpret that as yeah anything and get confused it's not anything if it's outside of god's will and god's word that's not a whatever but if it is aligned to the will of god that's the whatever that we are talking about you ask whatever you want which is given by god granted by god you will have it okay so this is the way to receive answers have a clear conscience have confidence when we pray secondly pray to the father in the name of jesus now let's look at the third point here we must pray according to god's revealed will according to god's revealed will there are two passages 1 john 5 verses 14 and 15 could someone read it aloud please and the second one is john 15 verse 7 first john 5 yes this is the confidence we have in approaching god mm. that if we ask anything according to his will he mm. he hears us yes yeah 14 and 15 and and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have we have what we asked of him okay praise god thank you uh, thank you john so we understand from this passage that when we pray in the will of god so we have confidence that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us so if you make an application you know these days uh, we have uh, job opportunities online and we apply sometimes what happens some companies they give us a format so on that employment page they would have written saying if you wish to apply please apply and the steps are given so you need to apply like that if you don't apply like that they may not even look at your resume maybe you're like fantastic and you're the right person for the job but they would have written on their website you must apply in the format okay so what is god telling us he's saying if you pray a prayer according to my will i will hear you it will automatically come the application will come in because it's very much aligned to the instructions of god but what if we are praying something outside of the will of god it's as if he is not hearing us only we got it the application is not going through okay is it because you know you are you're not good enough no no we are not following the format there is an instruction do it like this but we are not following the instruction so when we pray to god the scripture is telling us we will have confidence that if we pray according to his will he hears us if we don't pray according to his will he didn't hear it only so then what to do why why am i not receiving an answer for this prayer why god why are you not working on this maybe it's not aligned to the will of god he's not hearing us on that prayer okay 
and it's for our good that he's not hearing it because it's not according to his purpose what is the second verse over there say and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him so if our application has gone through if he hears us it's like saying granted now we don't know about job application whether it will be granted hundreds of people apply but as far as god is concerned if god hears our prayer it's like granted got it because he heard it it's because it's already aligned to his will and when he heard it it's already granted we asked in his will why would he say no so here is the key point now i am praying a prayer of asking god i want to receive from god in my personal life uh, it could have to do with uh, success it could have to do with uh, uh, you know god show me the next steps it could have to do with um, finding a job it could have to do with finding a spouse you know it could have to do with anything maybe a big decision in life now i have to be diligent to ask according to the will of god that's the whole point if i ask outside of god's will one scripture saying it won't go through if you're not asking in the will of god he won't hear us we'll not have confidence before the father but if we ask in the will of god if he hears us it's as good as granted so what should we do with regard to the prayer request that you and i have we have to do a little bit of research okay what is that research get into the word of god and check is this correct is this biblical is this scriptural is this something that god will be happy about ha huh. then i'll start praying about this if it is not something god is going to be happy about don't even try before asking god do some research from the bible and check is it in god's will for me if it is in god's will then we go ahead and we start asking god for that so that's the way to receive from god first of all we have to be clear that we are asking in the will of god it may take some time in order for us to get to this place of being sure that something is the will of god but is it possible for us to know the will of god yes we can and we've said that you know in different uh, classes we've said it is possible for us to know the will of god when we see paul writing to the colossians colossians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 he says i pray for you that you may know the will of god so that you can be fruitful in every good thing that god has called you to do that will happen when you know god's will and in 1 corinthians 2 verses 9 10 and 16 the bible says that god has wonderful plans for us that scripture it says no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for us but he has revealed by his holy spirit so even though these amazing unseen things have been made by god for us how does god reveal them to us by the holy spirit and that's why we keep saying ask god to tell you ask god to speak to us how does god speak to us through first priority through his written word okay through the written word we call it logos through the inspired word called rema uh god can also speak in many other ways he can he can put a prompting in our spirit we can receive some words from god about what needs to be done he can speak through a vision he can speak through a dream he can speak through other people he can speak through an angel so many different ways in which god can reveal by his holy spirit what his purpose and 
will for our lives is. So here's the third thing. If we are serious about receiving something from the Lord, make sure that it is God's will. Pray align to God's will. If we are confused, then ask God for clarity and say, God, please make it clear to me, Lord, so that I can ask with confidence and that this is your will. This is a crucial step. If we are not clear that something is God's will and we keep asking, 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 if it's not his will, we will not get it. Okay? So this is important. First, determine whether it is the will of God. And we've already said that the Holy Spirit can tell us whether or not something is the will of God. Most often what happens is we know something is not God's will and yet we may be trying to make it God's will. That's where we struggle. We really struggle. Okay, And Holy Spirit, He keeps speaking, right? So many times the Holy Spirit also tells us, no, don't do that. That's not for you. But what we do? We put up an opposite struggle and we say, no, God, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. It's not going against your general purposes. Why not? I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking. You know, I may be fasting and praying also. So when we get into going against God's will and His purpose, then God is not responsible for the failure in our prayer. Okay. As long as we are asking in the will of God, it will be a successful prayer. This is the most crucial part. What am I asking? Is it in God's will? We must determine that. If we have determined this part, then the rest is easy. It's easy to have faith. It's easy to wait in faith. It's easy to receive from the Lord. So step three is a crucial one. Pray according to God's will. Any questions? Okay, none so far. Let's move on. Step four. Pray with a strong desire. When we studied about faith, we have seen Jesus told the woman who came to receive deliverance for her daughter. Let it be done to you as you desire. So, associated with our faith is our strong desire. Now, when we are asking God for something, we need to have a strong desire to see it come to pass. So, let's take for example, if uh, we are asking God help me to become strong spiritually, Help me to have very good knowledge of your word. Okay, that's my prayer request. First, I should come to God with a clear conscience. Why am I asking this? I'm not asking this to compete with anyone. I personally want to grow. Okay, I'm coming with a clear conscience. Second, I'm asking the Father in the name of Jesus. That's fine. Third, is it God's will that we grow in his word? Of course. Yeah, it is God's will. So there's no problem with that. Now. How much do I desire it? So if something is my prayer request, my faith and my desire should be active. Where I'm thinking, I really want to become strong in God's word. I really want to understand God's word. I'm willing to put extra time. I'm willing to take up courses. I'm willing to uh, you know, uh, do some Bible study. I'm willing to invest on resources that teach me uh, you know, about interpreting scripture, some tools, memorizing scripture. Why am I even able to do these things? Because I have a strong desire. It's not just a prayer request where I say, God, make me strong in your word and that's it. No. Associated with strong desire where every day I'm saying, God, I really want this. I'm working hard for it. I'm expecting this. So there is a desire associated with my request. All right? So that is also necessary when we are 
praying a prayer and we are saying, God, we want to receive from you with regard to this. And so let there be a strong desire. We've already seen John 15, 17. If, if uh, you know, you abide in me and my words abide in you, whatever you desire, whatever you desire, it will be done for you. So what is my desire? When I'm praying for something, do I want it badly? That's our language which we use nowadays. Right? Do you, how badly do you want it? If our desire is also active, it's attached to our faith, that's when we are praying that prayer correctly. Now, it could be an instance where, let's say, uh, we are praying for somebody's healing. How badly do we want that person to be healed? Every time we are saying, God, heal that person, heal that person. But how, how strongly are we desiring it? Or let's say there is a brother, he's struggling, not getting a job. We are praying for him. How badly do we want him to get a job? Or how do we desire strongly that he should get a job? Or anything for that matter. You know, put your prayer request. How badly do you want it? Or how much do we desire? So that also plays a huge part in order for us to receive from the Lord. So a strong desire. Is there a strong desire attached to my prayer request? Am I desiring to see the outcome? You know, maybe God has called you to be a pastor or a leader and put a dream in your heart and told you your ministry is going to look like this. How badly do you want it? You know, are you, are you expecting one day to walk into those things and, and see those dreams fulfilled where you're actually serving, you're ministering, you're being a blessing to hundreds and thousands of people? Right, You're being resourceful, you're being able to give to them, you're be being able to encourage them. How much do I desire the outcome? Even that matters. Okay, So a strong desire, according to your desire. Now, if there is a prayer request, it's needless to say, if I really want that to happen and I'm asking God, definitely there will be a desire that goes with it. That's the normal way. Surely we will desire to see those things come to pass. So there needs to be an active and a strong desire. The fifth one is to pray with faith, believing that you have received when you prayed. We've already seen these scriptures, but we will look at them once more. Could someone please read Matthew 21 verse 22? And Mark 11, verse 24. Online batch. A few of us could pull out these scriptures and read, please. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you mm. pray, believe that you receive them and you will, re you will have them. Mark 11, mm. 24. Okay, so whatsoever things you ask, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Right, Jiru, thank you so much for reading that. Uh, let's now read Matthew 21 verse 22 also. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Hmm. Yeah. So whatever things you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. Okay. So that is the instruction given to us. So we must believe that we receive them. Believing you will receive them. So you're actually acting upon it. You're believing that you receive them. Okay. So there's this story that people say, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, an adult and a child both prayed together. They prayed for rain. Okay. And both of them stepped out of the house. The child went and brought the umbrella. But the adult didn't. Okay. What does this, this uh, say? 
yeah faith the child truly believe that it's going to rain so got an umbrella but the adult just went okay it's it's just uh, obviously it's not true but it's just for us to understand sometimes we pray like this we pray and we actually don't believe there is one um, incident in the book of acts when peter is in jail the whole church is praying for him lord set him free acts 12 and god does a miracle god sends an angel in the night and uh, peter is rescued from the prison so he comes to the believers house okay and he knocks on the door they open the door peter is here people are not able to believe it can you imagine they've been praying for peter to be rescued peter is standing in front of them they're shocked how can this happen you prayed god answered the man is in front of you okay so i'm just trying to help us understand sometimes we pray but when god is actually moving in that direction our heart is somewhere else we're like oh my goodness what is happening why is this happening can this happen where is our faith is our faith attached to our prayer that's what jesus said he said whatsoever things you pray whatever you ask in prayer believing you will receive so when i'm asking am i really believing that i will receive or plan a plan b plan c if god gives okay if he doesn't give i have i have lord i have my own plans right but it shouldn't be like that when i'm asking am i truly believing that god is going to do that's the kind of faith that god wants when we are praying plan a there is no plan b no plan c i am believing but how can we have the confidence at this point to believe what we are praying for as long as we've done all the above and we've clarified that this is the will of god when it comes to this step we are confident there's nothing to be worried about i'm so sure i've verified confirmed this is god's will no problem i am believing when i'm asking god i want you to do this for me in my heart i have no doubt that god will do it amen so we have to come to this place when we whatever things you ask for in prayer believing that you will receive it we are believing we ask god he will do it for us he will answer okay so that place of confidence is necessary that place of um you know being strong is necessary now if we don't arrive here and we are not able to believe can we can we get an answer to a prayer that we are not believing believing in no because faith is necessary to receive from the lord if faith is not there forget it just forget it it's not going to happen okay so we must believe so let's do one thing we'll go in for a break almost end of class so let's take a break we'll come back and we will continue with understanding a believing prayer